Okay, so uh, questions 40 to 43. Small coin is placed, uh, rotation principal axis, and the lens uh, equation is given. Um, uh, you know, Acer sometimes even changes the way they will uh, give symbols for equations. So please be, be um, it's more important that you understand what an equation means than you get to caught up in um, what the symbols really are, especially because they love to change the symbols on you just to see if you really understand the equation. So uh, you can write it any way you want. Um, uh, I tend to write it 1 over f is equal to 1 over i plus 1 over o, where, um, of course, i is the image, <laughs> o is the object, and f is the uh, focal length. But, um, you know, they did a little differently. Fine, it's, it's not a problem. So. Um, they show you the screen and the lens and the coin and then the question in which direction will the ray of light from the coin emerge after passing through the lens? So here we go. So first of all, um, it's important to understand uh, uh, geometric optics and, uh, and what your expectations are because uh, this is a converging lens. You know, it's a converging uh, thin lens. And uh, one expects that uh, when light hits a converging lens, okay, so this is a light ray that comes here and hits a converging lens, that the lens will converge uh, the light ray to a point. So we definitely know it will converge uh, to a point. The question is, uh, you know, where exactly will this image be? Obviously, it's a real image because the light is on the opposite side of the lens. When it is a... Um, uh, a mirror, the real image has to be on the same side of the lens because mirrors bounce light off, but uh, lenses, ha um, you can pass right through the lens. So, in terms of uh, figuring out a lot to do with what happens to the image, I want to uh, introduce you uh, to my little friend here. So, this equation, M is equal to negative i over o is very, very helpful. This is the magnification equation. And this magnification equation can do so many uh, helpful things. Um, first, it can tell us about magnification. And why is that important? Because um, let's pretend that you, so you heard someone told you that uh, something had a magnification of 50 times. So if you have a magnification of 50 times, what that would mean is that you have an image which is 50 times bigger than the object, okay? So if you have um, a magnification, though, of a fraction, what that means, if your magnification is less than one, it means that the image is smaller than the object. So if it's greater than one, it's bigger, it's less than one. Well, look, I over O. So if the, no matter what, the image, in this case, is going to be, uh, the image distance is going to be smaller than the object distance. Wherever it lands, the image distance is smaller than the object distance. Uh, why do I know that? Because I see where the screen is, <laughs> you know, and the screen is definitely at a distance which is closer to the lens than where the coin is. And so the, the image is going to be smaller than the object, so I know that the image is going to be diminished in size which means reduced in size, it's going to be smaller than the object. So I know that just from the magnification equation. The magnification equation is also useful because of the sign that can be used. Because when the magnification is negative, when it's negative, then the image is inverted. When it's positive, it means that the image is erect or upright. So um, now I see here that the object distance is positive. The image distance is also positive because it's a real image. The image distance is only negative if it is a virtual image, which is definitely not the case here. So because it is a real image, it's a positive image distance. This is positive image distance, positive object distance. Therefore, the magnification equation is negative, meaning the image is inverted. So inverted means that the image is upside down. So we have a real image because light actually passes through the lens and the definition of a real image is that light actually passes through the image point, which is clearly the case here because light is converging to this point. 
we have an inverted um, uh, image because of the magnification equation uh, lets us know that. The image is going to be diminished again because of the magnification equation. And so this is the top of the coin here. When we come over here, you have to remember the top of the coin is going to be upside down. The top of the coin will be the bottom on the other side. And so the so now keeping that in mind, because it's, in, uh, it's diminished. In other words, by the way, if it was an arrow pointing up here, what we would get on this side is a smaller arrow pointing downwards. Diminished in size and inverted, but real. Um, so that's what we would get. So when you look at the lens and you look at your options for question number 40, one, two, three, and four, Okay, one and two are just completely out of it. <laughs> they don't, don't make any sense. If you look at uh, three, Roman numeral three, and just put your pencil there and, uh, and align it so that you can see where it hits on the screen, you'll see that three pretty much hits at the same level of the height of the coin. That is wrong because it's supposed to be both diminished and inverted. So it has to be smaller than the coin and upside down. But if you look at four, now four, by putting your pencil there, it looks like four drops below the axis. And so um, four, Roman numeral four, would be the correct answer. Now, number 41, what is the distance of the screen from the lens? So what is the distance of this real image here to the lens and to calculate that that's uh, fairly easy because um, we just need um, uh, to use uh, this equation and we know that the focal length uh, has been provided as the number six and the uh, object is 18 um, 18 centimeters so we can just work in centimeters because it's all going to be the same and uh, so we'll have 1 over i is equal to 1 over 6 minus 1 over 18 because we'll bring that over we'll change 1 over 6 to uh, 3 over 18 and then we have minus 1 over 18 and this is equal to 1 over i and so that's obviously just 2 over 18 which is 1 over 9. And so if this is equal to that, then this is equal to that. So i is simply equal to 9. So 41 is a, and then we move on to the next question. And uh, 42, the orientation and size of the image formed on the screen relative to the coin are, well, it's, um, it's going to be diminished and inverted. So inverted means opposite and diminished uh, means smaller in size using the words that they have. So question 42 would be D. And <laughs> I'll just add this little point just because you might get caught. Just keep this in mind is that inverted means um, upside down if this was right side up, but sometimes Acer would like to ask you, is it also left right inverted? Meaning, if you can label one side of this coin and the other side, will the two sides be different over here? And the answer is yes, definitely it would be different. Because it looks like this is shaped, uh, you know, this, this lens is shaped like this, but if we were to pick up the lens and look at it, we, it would probably be shaped more like, like that. And so, um, if we were to look at it from the same perspective of the coin, then the lens would look something like this. So if it, if you uh, a ray hits up here, it will be converted downwards. And if it hits up up down here, it will converge upwards. If it hits on the right, it will converge inside. And if it hits on the left, it will converge uh, on the other side. Why? Because it's a converging lens. And it will always make light converge where, wherever um, uh, the light ray hits it. It will always be forced to converge to a point. So, um, yeah, that's it for uh, 42. 43, you know, if, if, you, if you happen to have uh, seen the video that I've uh, done on uh, thin lenses, you would know that converging rays on a diverging lens are simply, uh, will, will diverge. So 
these are rays that are converging on a diverging lens. Now, see the opposite here. This is a converging lens. So rays that hit a convex lens converge to a point. Rays that hit a diverging lens uh, diverge. Um, there is an exception. <laughs> uh, so th the exception which uh, Acer shows you is that if you trace um, Z, uh, X to Z, uh, you will see um, the, uh, the exception. This is that if a light ray is moving parallel uh, to the axis, then that light ray will diverge, okay? That light ray will diverge, and it will diverge away from the um, focal length, F. Okay, parallel to the axis, it will diverge um, from the focal, uh, focal point, I should call it. Focal length is the length between the focal point and the, um, on, and the lens. So, um, but what Acer did was the opposite. Because, because this is geometric optics, it's geometry. So if a ray can go like this and then go up, then it means that if, if a ray comes in exactly in line with the focal length, so even if the ray's off a bit, then it will diverge, like, like I've shown you here. But if the ray is in that, I mean, what are the chances? The ray is exactly in line with the focal length, then the ray will go like this, and then it will end up going parallel to the axis. And that's the exceptional situation that um, um, they have put in the diagram by showing you X, which is exactly in line with F2. You can put your pencil there and see that X is in exactly in line with F2, and for that reason alone, X ends up going parallel to the axis at Z. But Y is not in line with uh, the focal length, and therefore Y acts like all the other rays that hit a diverging lens, and Y um, uh, diverges, does not run parallel to the axis, and rather diverges. And you can see that the amount that it diverges from, if you look at the same point on both sides, it has the same, um, same height. And by doing that, you can see that it's number two. Uh, so the correct answer uh, is number two, uh, Roman numeral two, which means um, B. And if you want to learn uh, more about uh, geometric optics, uh, you, can, uh, you can look at uh, these uh, sections, 11.3 to 11.5.